Well, the fossil was found um, in 2004 by a, um, a collector who was walking along the foreshore in Bex Hill in Sussex. And I got quite interested because the, the surface textures did look as though they might be the membranes associated with the coverings of the brain. And what we ne then needed to do was really sort of look, look in more detail um, and start to investigate the actual surface structures and maybe to see whether we could probe into the interior of the object using scanning electron microscopy. But soft tissues really need special preservation conditions. And so usually you need quite a lot of low oxygen to, to stop bacteria, for example, from decaying and breaking down the tissues themselves. You really, it's a race against time to try and preserve the, the fidelity of these tissues and their actual appearance before decay comes in and removes them. And uh, what we believe happened is that the, the, the skull, this central portion here, uh, was buried in relatively shallow but stagnant water. Um, so as the animal died, it must have sort of its head must have tipped over into a stagnant pond. And that particular stagnant environment was one that promoted the preservation of the soft tissues. And this amazing specimen has preserved the not only the texture and structure of what are called the meninges, these very tough membranes that surround the actual soft parts of the brain, but the mineralization has also preserved the fine blood vessels running through those textures, and also the really fine capillaries and a little bit of the cortex of the brain immediately beneath those membranes. So this isn't uh, a revelation. Of course a dinosaur had a brain, um, but we're actually seeing some of the textures of the brain themselves, which I never thought we'd ever do.